Give us a sense of where you start in figuring out how to deal with a, a, a situation we've never seen before in the oil business. Well, thank you, David. It's great to be back with you. Yes, it is an extraordinary situation that we're looking at in the marketplace today. You, you saw the numbers from yesterday. I don't think anyone, at least in my lifetime, has seen anything near that or like that. We're taking uh, very aggressive but appropriate steps to help the industry and help uh, help this economy, if you will, get through this uh, pandemic. One of the steps that we took initially was to open up the strategic reserve, make the storage available to the industry. That's what drove some of the pricing yesterday. You'll note that the uh, folks who were closing out those futures contracts uh, couldn't take possession of the oil because, candidly, they had no place to put it. So storage is a very acute concern all throughout the industry. We've uh, now contracted to take approximately 23 million barrels of oil, put that into the strategic reserve. Uh, you also saw the president's tweet. I'm going to work closely with Secretary of Treasury Mnuchin uh, to see what we might do to look at the, uh, the laws and the facilities that Congress has directed us to create, the lending facilities, the Main Street Lending Program, other types of facilities. There's a Federal Reserve facility as well to ensure that those are available to the energy industry as well. So we're working very closely together to ensure that uh, all of the folks in the producing community have access to those types of loans, those, that type of liquidity, because right now that's, what, that's another acute concern that we have. So as you go about approaching this very difficult question, how do you strike the proper balance between, on the one hand, I know you've said it before, the president said it, you want to maintain a free enterprise system. You don't want the government just controlling these markets. On the other hand, you have to save the energy industry. How can you preserve the private sector at the same time that you save it? <laughs> well, it's a very difficult balance we're trying to strike. Uh, you know, the, the market is ruthlessly efficient at uh, weeding out high-cost producers. And in America, we, we, we honor the free market system. It's what has brought us to where we are today as a country, and that is a free and independent nation. So we want to continue that as we move forward. That being said, there are market anomalies that happen from time to time, and no one could have predicted the impact of this COVID-19 pandemic that we're all facing. And as we talked about in the past, the demand curve has moved so quickly in a downward fashion that it's, you know, the production is simply not able to keep up with it. It's not able to ramp down as quickly as the demand curve is ramped down. So as a result, we're dealing with this oversupply of oil. So our intent is to look at what we can do, things like the storage that we just talked about, but also with regard to some of the things that, you know, Congress has generously provided this industry. Uh, you know, uh, taking advantage of, for, you know, perhaps uh, uh, deducting losses that are incurred this year against the last five years of profits. Those are important right. liquidity tools right. that we're going to help the industry make it, take advantage of. Mr. Secretary, what about uh, curtailing some of the supply? That is to say, for example, banning imports of oil, particularly from Saudi Arabia. That's something that's been mentioned in the press. may not be on your agenda. Sure. The, the president has not uh, taken any of those options off the table. He, he will continue to evaluate the situation at whatever time is appropriate. He'll make those decisions. Uh, but he has stated repeatedly, and I'll state it again, he, is, he, is, he, is, he will avail himself to any option available to him to help this important industry make it through this pandemic. You know, with regard to the imports of oil, it's important to remember that certain refineries in the United States are set up to take specific types of oil. And there's a fundamental difference between, you know, being dependent upon the import of oil, as we were in 1973 and 1974, and simply trading oil, which is what you see in the marketplace today. Uh, many refiners choose to import uh, heavy, sour crude because that's, uh, for them, the most efficient, most economical way to maintain a, a profitable status for their businesses. But that's trade. That is not dependent. It's not dependent on the import. 